Guys, welcome back to yet another off-grid case study. So today, we're in Tunkillo. So this is the Adelaide Hills. We have hooked our client up with another amazing Victron setup and we're keen to show you. So let's get stuck into it. This is the install. Boom, up here. We've built this over a couple of days. Really good install. Our client has decided to build their shed first and they're building a nice house out in their paddock later on. So we're hooking them up with some power because up until now, they've just been running off a generator, really sort of costing a bit of money in fuel and maintenance and they want something a bit more reliable where they don't have to think. We have hooked them up with two 250 volt 100 amp MPPTs from Victron. We've had to use these smaller MPPTs on this one, the 450 100s and the 450 200s that we normally use for DC coupled setups unfortunately aren't available at this point in time, but we've hooked them up. So this is pretty well doing the exact same stuff. Uh, we've just had to wire up the roof a little bit different. So they're still getting 200 amps of DC charging into their batteries. We've hooked them up with four US 5000B batteries. We've got about 19 kilowatt hours of usable storage here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 20 kilowatt hours total, but 19 ish usable. So. Really good, like in previous episodes, comms, managed system, 100 amp discharge per battery, plenty of power. So we've hooked them up with a bit bigger of a cabinet. We can chuck in another two modules, another 10 kilowatt hours of storage on this one. So really good, really neat. Um, we've hooked them up with uh, a server edge cabinet and the battery brackets from Battery Works. So I've shown you those on previous episodes. So check out our old videos if you wanna have a look at those. To the big dog, we've hit them up with a Multi Plus 15. So this is a 48 volt 15 kVA inverter charger so this can do 200 amps of charging from an ac input 48 volt and has a continuous sort of run i would say about 12 kilowatts well over 50 amps of ac output so really good unit um, this will give you pretty much the same amount of power as a standard house here in south australia you can if you need something a bit bigger you can parallel multiple 15 kva units so you can do commercial setups with these or you can get three of them and do three phase setups. So this is just a single phase setup on this one. As always on all of our installs, we've got a GX Touch 50 here. So we can do the Touch 50 or we can do the Touch 70. Most clients just go the Touch 50. We will hook this up onto the VRM portal so we can monitor it on the phone. So because we've had this on for a little bit already, we can see 340 watts coming from the solar. Um, it's sort of just providing what we need for the AC loads um, and to push in the last little bit of power in the absorption mode from the MPPT controllers. Not a lot going on. We've got 260 watts from the lights that we've got running in the shed, but client isn't running anything major at the moment. The client already had the shed wired by their Sparky, uh, but we've done slight modifications to their board. The only thing that we've really done for them is, as always, built in the redundancy that we always talk about. So generator changeover switch, like in case the multi plus dies, we can go to gen supply only, flick it down and we can run the property off the generator keeps their fridge running, keeps everything good, keeps power on in case anything major happens. So hooked them up with that. What we've done on the roof on this one, we've got a bit of a slight angle back south. Now, because we're in Australia, our optimum angle is, or azimuth is north. So what we've done is we've got some reverse tilts from our friends at Clean Energy, and we've done a reverse tilt setup. So we've pointed the panels about 25 degrees on that angle out to the north and we've paired them up really well with Hollywood bracking from uh, Clean Energy, so the all blacks as well as 30 ICO 440 Neo stars. So you've seen them on previous episodes on our Kangaroo Island trip. We've used the ICO 440 all blacks. They've got the inbuilt shade tolerance. They've got the aesthetics. They look really nice and they perform really, really well. So having been to their factory in China, I can guarantee on the quality control, we're using mostly all ICOs on most of our installs. They're a great panel and they're perfect for an off-grid setup because of the shade tolerance and the temperature coefficients. And because the client's building an architectural house out here later on, we've got to have the aesthetic. This is the setup, absolute belter. Like I said, if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments. Uh, give us a thumbs up, it really helps. Subscribe to see some more content like this. And if you are looking for an off-grid setup, chuck us an email down below, jump on our website. We'd love to help you. So if you're anywhere in South Australia, anywhere in New South Wales, give us a yell. More than happy to design a system for you. Catch you in the next one, guys.